hi guys welcome back to another video um i was so shocked to get so many comments on my last video and i was just really I, every time i got a notification that i got a comment i was like oh thank you lord because i was just like i don't know why it was just so surprising but i was just grateful that you know the lord laid it or um allowed y'all to watch it and that y'all could relate to it and different things like that so i'm just really grateful for that so thank you guys for watching the video and god bless and may he continue to, you know to guide you all and keep y'all um so today i just wanted to i'm not going to be as long as the other video but today i just wanted to talk about a moment when how the kids well not how the kids say but yeah how the young people say nowadays um god clocked my tea um so i guess that's kind of like slang not slang oh my gosh not me making myself sound like i'm so old that's just crazy that is slang for basically like god called me out so i I'm a part of one church, but I started going to another church for their Bible study. Um, I initially wanted to go to go to this church because the members, there's a lot more people my age, and I felt like I would have an easier time relating and fitting in there. Um, now it's very much Bible based, and they they don't mince words when it comes to uh, the Word of God. But it's just that they had that and I felt like I could find community and I was really starting to get um, just feeling sad about not having a lot of like friends or, and, or having friends my age and whatnot here and people that I felt like really comfortable with, I guess, that were my age. So the first time I tried to go there, it did not work out um, and I ended up just going to my uh, my own churches, their Bible study. And then I think maybe like a couple weeks went by or maybe like a month or two. I can't even remember but I tried it again I had prayed I was like, okay Lord last time I didn't get to go but I prayed this time I get to go and I'm like I wanted my reason my reason to be right not to go for community or to go to find friends but to go for the Lord and I ended up going and it was great I enjoyed it and whatnot and they have um Bible study and then they have like small groups afterwards which is what i was really interested in was getting into small groups and getting around other young christians um yeah so there was one time like i think it was the first or second time i can't even remember y'all and i just want to lay actually let me lay a more some more background i used to be very boy crazy growing up um very boy crazy and i to be honest i should have books I should have short series. I should have a movie. Like, to be honest, Tyler Perry, he he should probably reach out to me. Like, I'm not saying, well, I'm not down myself. I'm not saying we're going to, you know, we're going to take him all the way up here. But I like to add, you know, I love to, I can create stuff in my head so well, like different stories. And I've been doing that since I was young. And it's just so exciting. Right now, currently, I'm working on another story <laughs> that's in my head. But, um... Yeah, I'm, I just really love to do it. I love to use my imagination and do stuff like that. However, that has caused me sometimes to live in a fantasy world sometimes, which is not okay. And I think it's this thing they call maladaptive dreaming. And where like, say I used to have like a crush on a guy when I was younger and I would fantasize about our life and it would be the, fur the furthest thing from reality. And that en ended always ended with me having my feelings hurt. So God has been working on me with that. We, you know, we're not where we used to be a long way from where we used to be. Anyway, back to the story. So this night, um, I sat between two guys because it's, it's a packed house. It's a packed house um, for the, the small group session. And it was towards the end. And, you know, we were taking notes and the speakers were speaking. And they were sending around a sheet for you to, you know, make sure you sign your name. So when the sheet got to me, I signed my name and I completely missed whatever they were talking about because I, I tend to focus in on one thing at a time sometimes. And so I passed the paper along and then went back to, you know, what we we're there talking about, but they were wrapping up and they prayed and whatnot. And then one of the guys um, who was sitting next to me was like, hey, did you get that last point? Um, <laughs> let me stop. <laughs> 
See, this is why I have to like, this is why I have to renew my mind because your girl, I, I don't even know how to describe it. Anyway, he asked me, did I get the last one? I was like, no, I didn't get it. So he let me um, copy off of his tablet or whatever. And so I'm writing or, and whatnot. And automatically, y'all, my head starts going like, how, would, how does he know you missed that last point? He, he must have been watching, huh? And so I'm thinking this and I'm like, okay, thank you, know, thank the young man. Tell him, you know, have a good night. I didn't even look him at, I didn't even see his face. I didn't look at him in his face. Um, I just, you know, told him, thank you, have a good night. And I got up and I started to leave. And as soon as I started to leave, y'all, I started to smile because I was just like, he must see something he likes. Um, again, God is working on me. Um, for those who don't know, because y'all probably don't know, I have been single and abstinent since like 2020. Like it was the end of 2019, so I don't really count that. But starting 2020 until, you know, now I've been single, abstinent, walking with the Lord. So, you know, um, yeah. So as I'm walking, I'm walking to my car. It's a little ways away. And I'm still like thinking about it, like, oh, he must have seen something he likes. Like, okay, next time I have to say, you know, say more to him and this and that. And automatically, um, well, not automatically, but as I'm walking, I have a thought that I know it's not my thought because it's very much going against my flesh. Um, and the thought was, well, what if he's being, what if he was, what if he's being a good brother in Christ? And I was like, Holy Spirit, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that wasn't Satan because Satan would love for me to get into a whole, you know, fantasy session and start idolizing marriage and men and blah, 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 blah. But that was the thought that came into my head. Or what if he's just being a good brother in Christ? And from that moment, I said, okay, Lord, I hear you. Um, sorry about that because what if he was just being a good brother in Christ, you know? So... From since then, since I've been attending this church for the Bible study, I find myself like when I start getting ready, because there was a time actually where I had to like really cast down imaginations because I would start having thoughts of like, ooh, I wonder what he's like. And I'd have to cast it down and be like, hey, that's not the season of your life you're in. That's not the season of life you're in right now. We have bigger fish to fry. We have more important fish to fry. We need to be in our word. We need to be in our Bible bag. We need to be focusing on the Lord and focusing on what he has you here to do. Um, not uh, ruminating on potential things or anything like that. God hasn't confirmed anything to you. So it's not your business to get wrapped up in this. And so every I find myself whenever it's time for Wednesday, like I want to put like, a, you know, make sure I look really good, which is just a thing, period. I do like to make sure I look good when I go on, I'm going out. But then I have to catch myself and be like, hey, you're literally going here for Jesus. Remember, we're not going here for it just to find community and find friendships or not going there to find um, a husband or boyfriends or anything like that we're going for jesus and so every single time before i pray y'all before i pray before i go i pray and i say lord clean my mind clean my heart let me come here like i want to meet you here i want to come here with the expectancy that i'm going to hear from you that i'm going to come in contact and come even closer to you so there have been some times where there's been like i think like two times where i've seen this young man's face and um, I remember one time I saw his face walking. Yeah, I saw his face and where I sat down, when the speaker stood up to speak the whole night, they, I, it blocked, our vision was blocked or my vision to them was blocked. Um, and I was like, okay. And at the end of that session, the speaker, he was talking about young, he was say, talking to the, to the men in the classroom and he was saying like, trying to keep yourself on the path and chasing after God, sometimes you're going to have to go to church and go home. Like there's not gonna be, they might not get to come and do all that fellowshipping. Sometimes you're gonna have to come to church and go home. And when he said that, I felt convicted because I was like, Brittany, you need to come, you need to get, you need to get going. So that's what I did. As soon as they prayed, I got up and I went to my car and I went home. And that is what I've been doing ever since. 
But I tell y'all, every time I pray and I'm like, Lord, give me a clean heart not to come, like, not to not to act like this, not to be like this. Um, I have not seen that young man since. And I'm literally coming there for the word of God. And I'm leaving filled up with the word of God. So I had just wanted to come and talk to y'all about this because God will definitely clock your teeth. He will definitely call you out. Holy Spirit will definitely lead and guide you in the right path because who, man, Brittany a year ago, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago would have gotten so wrapped up in a fantasy and in idolatry and that's not where I want to be anymore. Like that's, I'm, I've let that part go. And so I'm actively trying to resist that. And that takes me um, actively doing things like um, reading the word, casting down thoughts. And I'm sorry to say it for whoever might be listening, you might have to cast them thoughts down a couple, a couple times a day. Like it might be a lot. Every single time those thoughts come up, I literally will go, no out loud or say, um, I resist you devil or no, that's not, that's not reality. I will literally speak that out loud to say like, or I will say, no, I cast that thought down in the name of Jesus Christ, because that is, that is in opposition to what is, what is re in reality right now. If that's something my father has for me, it'll manifest in the, in the physical realm at the right, when it's his timing. But right now, that's not the, that's not what we're on right now. So I just wanted to come and say that to y'all is making sure that we're, we are actually following and using the word of God to grow ourselves because this is growing me, you know, to, cause like I said, back in the day, I would have ran with it. My mind would have ran with it. But now it's like, instead of positioning myself to see him or to speak to him or to, you know, try to get so dressed up to go to church as, you know, I'm now, I would have never thought me, I don't like, and it sounds so, it may sound trivial to somebody else, but I'm telling y'all, my mind can do a thing. Hey, it is such a, a crazy thing for me that I will on more than one occasion come to God and be like, okay, Lord, this is what I'm feeling. I, you know, been trying to walk the straight and narrow these past couple years. But these hormones, you know, I'm getting older and they, they seem like they trying to do something else. They're not like how it used to be when I was, you know, 11, 10, not, you know, not like that. These are grown woman hormones. Um, yeah, and they're fully operating. And I have to bring that to the Lord and say, Lord, this my, this man is, on, is in my mind. Like, I'm not coming here for him. I'm coming here for you. Please help me. And like I said, ever since, every time I pray that prayer, I do not see this man. I It's like, I come he's not in the, I don't know I don't, I don't even know if he's in the class I don't know we've had a hurricane come through and the church was closed or I didn't get to go to one of the services or when I there was a couple times when I it was when I came they had took all the men to put them in like a like a men's soft, small group or something like that um I just have not seen him and I just keep thinking about it every single time and I'm like, Lord, thank you because I'm not getting caught up in a fantasy. But anyway, you guys, um, I just wanted to say that um, and I should probably add scripture to it. Hold on. Okay, so it's actually so funny because I went outside to read this morning and I kept asking the Lord, okay, what do I need to read and or what do I need to study? And I kept getting Ephesians 4. And so in Ephesians 4, I have the NLT Bible in front of me right now, but starting um, at Ephesians 4, verse 17 to uh, 24, it says, with the Lord's authority, I say this, this is Paul talking, live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against him. So that's what I was saying where it was crazy that now I'm the type of person to go to God about these things and say, hey God, this is what I'm feeling. Can you help me shut these down? I know that what I'm feeling is is not necessarily bad, but I know it's not going to produce something good. This is this is why I said that because this is that's a part of not hardening my heart because I can harden my heart and say, you know, well, it's, it's, it's just nothing. It's nothing. It's innocent or it's just in my head and I can go and do all that. But I know that the path where that leads to is me, is, is idolatry, is me idolizing this man or thinking lustful things about this man. So he, um, 
don't want to do that. So continuing on, starting at verse 19, they have no sense of shame. They live for their lustful pleasures and eagerly, eagerly practice every kind of impurity. 20, but this isn't what you learned about Christ. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. So yeah, so that's what we have to do is we have to renew our mind we, or we have to let the Holy Spirit renew our mind, renew our thoughts, renew our attitude. But um, yes, yeah, since we learn, we have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth and we mm, and have learned that truth comes from him. Like the Holy Spirit brings us truth. He teaches us truth. The Lord teaches us truth. His word teaches us his truth. And we don't need to use the excuse of not not say we're always going to be ignorant to some certain things but we have to grow and not be so ignorant um because i i'm learning that ignorance is what the enemy loves to use against a believer or against anybody ignorance and not knowing something is what he loves to do one of his favorite weapons but um in verse 22 it says throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life so that's I, that makes me feel so happy because it makes me feel like i can see the growth in myself that the lord is doing where i've thrown away what i the old habits that i used to do and the old things that i used to do and throwing off that old self and letting the holy spirit take his like do his work in me and like show it so i'm glad i get to come and share that with y'all now so again that was um ephesians chapter 4 verses 17 through 24 so i hope you guys enjoyed i'll see y'all um whenever i don't know whenever i come back i hope y'all have a great day night evening whenever y'all see this be blessed love y'all bye, -bye.